What impressed you the most about China? But it was not always like that. War, disaster, hunger. That's the situation 100 years ago in China. In 100 years, China achieved a great change. And that's what amazed me. Before I came to China for study Chinese history, I used to think that only small countries could be invaded and colonized by powerful countries. I never thought that a big country like China would have similar experience. Maybe you have some opinions about China, but I think if you want to understand real China, you have to know history of China. For example, you have to know history of both. The following cartoon published in 1898 gives us a good idea of the situation in China at that time. In this picture, bear, dog, toad, eagle, sun and sausage represent Russia, Britain, France, USA, Japan and Germany. These countries had their own spheres of influence in China and they controlled their regions. These countries was colonizing China. China's economy for thousands of years was the world largest. Some scholars have calculated that even in 7th century, China's GDP accounted for one third of the world total. But after the Industrial Revolution, comparing the Western countries, China's science, technology, and economy were behind. Shanghai, now one of the most developed cities in China, was just a small town before the invasion of the Western countries. After the British defeat China in the Open War, Shanghai became one of the trade ports that China opened to the outside world and soon developed as a center of trade and exchange between the East and the West. At that time, Britain, France, Japan, United States, and others established their concessions in Shanghai, and foreigners could enjoy different special privileges, while Chinese people had no status at all. What kind of Chinese people was locked down by Westerners? At that time, the majority of Chinese population were farmers. The stereotype of the Westerners on the Chinese has been stuck in this period. In the face of crisis, generations trying to save their people emerged from China. In the beginning of 20th century, a group of revolutionaries accepted uh, the influence of Marxism. They believed that the strength of working class and the peasants could resist foreign aggression. In 1921, these revolutionaries decided to establish a new political party. This city I'm going to visit called Jiaxin, East China's Zhejiang province, which is the birthplace of Communist Party of China. In July 1921, the first National Congress of the Communist Party of China was held in Shanghai. Because the West and the Chinese government were against of Chinese Communists, the first National Congress of the Communist Party of China was held underground in the French Constitution in Shanghai. There were only 13 Chinese at the meeting, representing more than 50 party members from all over the country. The young Mao Zedong was one of those delegates. However, the meeting was forced to halt under spiced arrow, so the delegates had to leave Shanghai for Jiaxin, Zhejiang province. They found a wooden boat and continued the meeting in secret. Jiaxin now is a modern city, but 100 years ago it was a very small town. From my perspective, the small boat is a symbol of the wisdom, courage and determination of the 13 revolutionaries. Today, Chinese people preserve this small boat and call it Red Boat. These people visiting in an endless stream every day. 100 years ago, this day, weather was like today. 
and this is the boat where they had meeting. That day, on this boat, they decided the name of Chinese Communist Party. And it can be said that that day, on this boat, was born Communist Party of China. during my study and living in China with Chinese people, I felt that Chinese people have a special sense of patriotism. As a foreigner, researching history of China, I feel thrilled by the hundred years of experience of the Communist Party of China, which having developed its party members from around 50 initials to 95 million at present, achieving its great contribution in the wartime and gaining economic achievements in peacetime. The Communist Party of China has led the Chinese nation to build up military force strong enough to fight against a powerful foreign enemy and also has boosted their economy without relying on colonial activities to accumulate wealth. Moreover, it has left 1.4 billion Chinese out of poverty across the country. In 2021, in the climate of hundreds of millions of people still being in poverty, how to enable people in backward areas to live a happy life has always been a challenge and difficulty confronted by the world. Now China has made great achievements, which is the reason why the party deserves admiration, my point of view. And sometimes I ask myself how China will look like in the future. Let's wait and see it.